graffiti here in the Himalayas is way, way, way better than the stuff you see out in the U.S. I mean, check, look at this stuff. It's, uh, they literally carve it into the rock. So even if they paint it over, this is all there. Now, I'm sure it's not graffiti, but painting on rocks isn't cool, man. Don't do it. Hello ladies and gentlemen, it is the start of day four and uh, I find myself here en route to Pangboche from Namste Bazaar. Uh, altitude differences today will be going from 11,000 to 13,000 feet. So it's not too bad of the uh, elevation gain and if I feel good I'll keep going up one more town and hit it, hit, try to hit 14,000 feet. Okay, wish me luck. I forgot to mention, uh, it's about eight and a half miles from uh, Namste Bazaar, no, whatever, to uh, Pangboche. Yes. Okay, it's recording. You guys remember those, the two bridges that I crossed earlier? Well, I'm like way above them now. Here, I'll show you. There they are. Really pretty. Oh, it's a little hazy. Let's see if this polarizer filter does anything. Yeah, there you go. Nice. This is where I'm at, guys. The Himalayas. Snow. More snow. And poop everywhere. After a rest day, Namche is back to the trail again, this time heading for Tengboche and the magnificent world famous monastery that I've always heard about. There is a checkpoint between these two places, uh, they check for your permits and your passport here. There's the broken bridge, and we're gonna go up the new bridge. The day started out beautifully. The weather was perfect, bright and clear. It was the first time since reaching Namche that I didn't need a jacket. After a mild hike of just going up, I finally made it to my tea house. This one was actually pretty nice. A lot of wood and uh, very clean. You look at that, Everest is in the middle, and you look at the outside, Everest is that one right there. Which one? Um, I made it to Bangboche. I could be wrong, I think it's Tangboche. Anyways, Everest is over there somewhere, past those clouds, a uh, bunch of mountains everywhere. Still pretty warm, I'm about 13,000 feet right now of elevation, and I just did laundry! Yeah, the water's a little cold, but at least I'll have somewhat clean clothes for the next day or two. Right, correction, I've made it to Pangboche. I'm at Pangboche, and the altitude here is 3,900 meters. At least according to that sign right there. Uh, it's around 3 p.m. today and I'm gonna go try to do a little quick 30 minute day hike to the Goompa that overlooks the town. See if I can get some cool shots up there. I'll check in in a second. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. All right, I'm on my way to see the Pongboche Goompa. I uh, have a couple hours before sunset and uh, I think that might be my next dance spot. So, up, up we go! Alright, here we go. Pretty sure there's this cow with one horn that's been following me around, and it looks like it wants to hurt me. I mean, look at it. Is that an evil cow or what? He's totally scheming. 
Ah, uh, yeah, you are. Totally wants to shove that horn up my, you know what? Bye. Keep an eye on you. Remember that yak poop I was talking about? Well, yep, that's where it goes. Keeps you nice and toasty. Okay, we are gonna have Dahl Bot at 12,800 feet, and it looks delicious. <laughs> this is my friend Tom. He lives in New Zealand, and he's really cool. He's the young guy. He's the young guy here. Yeah. And uh, he goes all over the places and treks and goes and does, you know, stare us stuff. He used to live in California for a long time. Yeah. He used to be a math teacher and stuff like that. Really cool guy. And <laughs> where are you headed off tomorrow? Uh, Ningboche. Ningboche. Ningboche, which is uh, a hilltop over Ding. <laughs> <laughs> we did. Guys, uh, I think I have a problem. Uh, there's, a, there's a hole in the ground. And I think I have to go poop in it. We'll see. This was actually the first tea house where I saw them uh, keep the fire on for more than an hour and uh, it was really nice actually. Nice and toasty the whole time. Hi Ducky! Hi! 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 Oh, you're a happy one, aren't you? Oh, yes you are! Hi! Oh, what's your name? Do you have a name? Do you have a name? Huh? Huh? Oh, look at dog just found random places, man. Oh, hi. I don't have any treats for you, but I have a nice tickle. Yeah. <laughs> you're a cute one, aren't you? Oh, you're doggy. Yeah, yeah, doggy. You were hanging out with your cow friend over there, weren't you? Cow. All right, I think you're over it, aren't you? Found another doggy. Another doggy. Come here, doggy. Hey. Doggy. Come here. Come here. Nope. You're not as cool as the other one, are you? Ah, the sun is bright and the sky is clear and the weather is amazing. Another beautiful day here in the Himalayas. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today is the start of day five. Uh, today I'm going from Pangboche to Chucking. It's about a seven mile day going from 13,000 feet of elevation up to 15,500. The plan is, is to stay at Chucking for a zero day, do a, a quick day hike up to 18 or 17,000 feet and see how I feel to move on up to Everest Base Camp. I'm excited. Let's see how this turns out. Woo! Boom. Mama, hello everybody at home. I'm alive, I'm okay. It is freaking amazing and gorgeous and cold and ah! I can't explain it to you guys. You guys gotta come out here at some point in your life. It is gorgeous and everybody is so nice and everything is so good. <sighs> come out here. All right, I've made it to the small uh, town of Dingboche. Dingboche is pretty. Uh, very, very photogenic. And so far there's been a shitload of people. Not what I expected in the Himalayas. But then again, this is a touristy spot. So from what I hear, once I get over the first pass, uh, a lot of the crowd starts to die down. So I'm looking forward to that. And man, some of these people trains are like 30 40 people long man I don't I, I don't even know how that's fun anyways enjoy it's beautiful okay fun fact time all the stupas around here have the giant pairs of eyes that look out on the four cardinal directions these are also known as the Buddha eyes and wisdom eyes the eye of the Buddha in the stupa symbolizes the all-seeing ability of the Buddha the Buddha eyes are supposed to represent wisdom and compassion. Above each pair of eyes is another eye, the third eye. 
It is said that when Buddha preaches, cosmic rays emanate from the third eye which act as messages to heavenly beings so that those interested can come down to earth to listen to Buddha. Okay, it is official. Every step forward from now on will be higher. I'll be going higher than I've ever have. Currently, we're at 4,505 feet by six, by seven, and uh, it's pretty much the highest I've ever been has been Mount Whitney, which is 14,505 feet. And uh, if you notice around me, I'm not on top of a mountain right now. The mountain's up there. There's still way more mountain everywhere you look. And uh, we're barely at 14.5. Crazy, right? Oxygen definitely feeling a little weird. Take two breaths for, you know, normal breath. Anyway, I'll check in later. Woo -wee! After a somewhat long day and seven miles later, total elevation difference of about 2,600 feet, I had finally made it to Chucking. Once I got here, I was pretty hungry, so I stayed at the closest lodge that I found, which was the Chucking Lodge and Resort. And uh, a room here goes for about, uh, I believe I paid 300 rupees, which would uh, be around 3 do US dollars. And uh, not bad, I mean, uh, this is kind of the higher part of the trail, and three dollars for some nice bedding, not bad. First thing is first, whenever I get to my room, I usually open up my pack, and then uh, get all the shit out of the way. Uh, I need to get water, so I need to get the water, gravity water, water filter out right here. I remember where I put it. Ah, there it is. Ah, found it. Now, I'm gonna go find me some water. Hopefully, not too far. Whatever, didn't close straight. Time to find some water. This is a long one. One of the bigger hotels that I stayed at. Ironically, it's at the most remote location. That's not a bathroom. That's not a bathroom either. You know where the water is? Hmm? Water? Agua water faucet? I don't know. No? Oh, okay. Just checking. They didn't have water like out of a faucet. They have a bunch of jugs. I don't know where that water came from, so good thing I'll be filtering this bad boy. Uh, and I will also be chemically <sighs> out of breath. I mean, I am at 15,000 feet right now, so. Um, good old Aquamira. This stuff is good for a lot of water. Um, takes 30 minutes to work. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add it and have three water, drinkable water in 30 minutes. of day five and what better way than to end it with beautiful sunset in the Himalayas yes sunsets it seems like there's a sunset in every corner and once once over the other one's still high up enough where there's still enough light and it is just gorgeous wow that one's my favorite over there I don't know if you can see it uh, Everest is behind there somewhere since we're so close to it we can't actually see the top but that's okay Wow, we got a little stream and everything. Look at that, gorgeous. That's Amal Dablam, yeah. 
As much as I enjoy the sunsets, as soon as that sun goes down, temperatures plummet below freezing. So you have to find yourself inside as fast as possible. Otherwise, you're you know, in putting yourself in danger of freezing to death, literally. That, it's a unicorn right there. That is a fucking uni yak. Yak, yak, yak. Oh, don't fall, dude. Oh, oh, shit. Guys, uh, I don't know what I got myself into, but uh, I'm rock climbing now without a harness. Kind of sketch. Say, hey, went in Rome. Wait, no, went in the Himalayas. <laughs> Look at, ah, uh, fuck. Yeah, it's awesome.